What's up, y'all? This is Sorry back with the reaction, y'all, from the Fat Man's podcast, y'all. Before we get in this video, y'all, please hit that like button and subscribe button and share that share this video with everybody. See your family, friends, whoever you see, and tell them to subscribe to the Fat Man's podcast, y'all. And go ahead if you have any comments on this video, any opinions, any thoughts, any whatever you got to say, go ahead and drop it in the comments. I do read all of them. I might not respond to them. I definitely do read them. And what's get up in this video, y'all? Well, after that, I hope everybody's doing well. I hope you know uh, New Year is about to New Year is about to come up here. Two more days. Oh, yeah, two more days. What's it? Friday? Yeah, today's Friday. So I hope your New Year's is gonna go well. Hope your new uh, New Year's revolu um, resolutions go well. I hope you succeed next year and everything that you want to do but what's up in this video y'all there's some jubilee and the title is should sons be raised differently fathers versus daughters a middle ground obviously we all know that fathers should not raise boys like girls or girl or, or fathers shouldn't raise the girls like boys I just don't, I don't, they don't compute with me. That doesn't make any sense to me. Um, no, nah, I, I just personally wouldn't, personally wouldn't want to do that. Uh, if you're going to raise him like a boy, if you're going to raise him like a girl, he's going to be a wussy. He's going to be, he's going to be not a real man. He's going to be a beta. Like Jesse Lee Pierce to say, beta. But all right, yeah, let's get up in here. We'll see what they're talking about. My best friend is a boy. We had this brilliant idea. Let's get a place together. But my dad's not cool with it. Human nature is like, if they're living together, they're going to hook up sexually. Something is going to happen. Oh. Oh. My name is Rihanna, I'm 20 years old. I'm Gabriella, I'm 20 years old. My name is Seat Lolly, I'm 14. And I'm really excited to have this conversation with my dad today. I'm pretty excited to talk to my dad about certain things, deep conversations. Uh, I feel a little bit nervous to talk to my dad today. My relationship with my dad is good. We've been through a lot of stuff together. He raised me on his own with no mom. So that has definitely built us stronger together. My name is Benjamin, and I'm the father of one beautiful and infinitely talented and loving 14-year-old young lady. My name is Mike. I'm a father of three girls. Hi, my name is Brian. I'm a father of two. Once you became a dad, what was your biggest lesson? That it, it's the true meaning of our existence. That's the thing I wanted most in my entire life, is to be a father. And it's everything I've ever expected. I'm Gabriella, and this is my dad, Mike. I'm Mike, and this is my daughter, Gabriella. My name is Benjamin, and this is my beautiful daughter, Seat Lali. Um, my name is Seat Lali, and my dad is Benjamin. Hi, I'm Rihanna. This is my dad, Brian. This is my daughter, Rihanna. Daughters, please go to the left. Fathers, please go to the right. Step forward if you agree with the statement. Daughters must be raised differently than sons. It's not so much because of them, but because of the society we live in. But I know if I had a 14 year old boy and I wanted to send him out to the corner store, I would feel pretty confident in doing that. But for my daughter, it's a different situation. And it's not our fault. It's because of society, like I said. I agree. Where I, right, where I have to be more careful. She's very strong and capable of, you know, 
defending herself in a lot of ways. But at the end of the day, um, she's not as big and strong as a dude. You yeah, know? and I'm gonna worry about that. So because of that, I feel I have to be more protective of her. I agree. And defend her. I agree. This is exactly the same thing. So I don't have a son. I only have daughters. But if I had a son, I don't think I would raise him any differently. Uh, the type of scenario that you're talking about, I completely agree. But I think is I think this world is dangerous for both male and female. One time I was in the eighth grade, and I guess I didn't tell my dad I was going to City Walk with my friends, and I didn't come home till like midnight or 11 p.m. and the cops were like all over my block. Yeah. I dialed 911. I said, hey, my daughter's gone. I don't know where she's at. Yeah. She doesn't answer her phone. If it was my brother, because he's three years older than me, so at the time I was like 14, he'd be 17. My dad would be like, eh, whatever. You know, if he calls me, he calls me. But if it's me, it'd be like, oh my God, my daughter is missing. I think he can be a little overprotective when it comes to like having friends that are guys. I think he assumes a lot. And I think he yeah. should just assume the best, not the worst. Me too. Like, just a cool friendship. There are no guy friends. No, I'm just kidding. I wouldn't let I wouldn't let any boys in our apartment, Burbank, especially not in your bedroom. You know. Yeah, my my best friend is a boy. We're very 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 close, and we're both in between housing situations right now for when we go back to college. We had this brilliant idea. Let's get a place together. We're best friends. We hang out 24/7. My dad's not cool with it. I'm just not going to challenge it because no reason to. Why aren't you cool with it? If you don't mind me asking. Because I think there's a place and a time for everything, and I don't think that I'm ready for her to move in with a guy that I don't know. And you know, human nature is like, if they're living together, they're going to hook up sexually. Something is going to happen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's just my opinion. It just would, ne it would never happen between, like, there's no way, ever. Can I ask you this? Um, let's say was, you're 20, right? 20 years old. Mm -hmm. Say you had a 20-year-old son and he was in a living situation where he wanted to have a female roommate. I think the answer, I think the answer is obvious. Okay. Because as you said, now I'm going to go back to agreeing with you that you have to treat it a little differently. But I think if I had a son and he was 20 and he would want to live with a girl, I wouldn't have any objection. But would you find it weird if you had a son and he was 20 and he wanted to live with a girl and there was nothing romantic there at all? No, I wouldn't find it weird. I know how guys are, you know, when they're young, they got a lot of testosterone and girls are, like to tease. It's dangerous for chicks. I mean, they got to really watch their step. But what if we're just sitting down and we look good? Is that still teasing someone? <laughs> you can, it can be. It depends on what you're doing. But I feel like girls don't even try doing it intentional. Sometimes people are just good at looking. If you raise them equally, then they'll learn and grow up to see each other as equals instead of like having like misogyny and stuff like that. Yeah, I completely on. agree with that. Me too. Completely. Blaming the girls kind of puts the onus on the girls to stop that gross behavior when the onus is on the boys and the people who are raising them and the media that they're watching. What would you say is the biggest challenge for you two? Probably something like communication him just understanding how I feel and sometimes that I don't agree with things that he thinks. Recently, I decided I wanted to live with my mom because uh, I just get a lot of intense anxiety around him and it might be a little awkward. <laughs>
I mean, the, when she said, I mean, you could tease him while you sit down. Like, I ain't like, like, if there's certain ways you could do it in order to, like, you know what I mean? But I understand where the father's coming from. Like, you, like, you know, like my do like if I had a dollar and she moving in with a boy or something like that, I would probably assume like he, he, either he hitting it or, you know what I mean? You never know what happens. And when she said, uh, oh, it never happened, da da da, uh, uh, you never know. That might be your one too. He's your friend, right? And I don't, I don't know. Maybe the dude gay or something like that. I don't, I don't know. But come on now, you never know. There's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot of uh, a lot of people out here that didn't, were friends. Were friends for a long time, and they moved in together. They ended up getting married and having children and stuff like that. So I mean, I couldn't understand where they're coming from too. Even I don't know. <laughs> you. I don't understand why she put it like. No, I don't think they should be raised equally. It just never happened in this lifetime. It will never be. It will never happen in this lifetime at all. Um, you could say there's a lot of people that try to like do it equally and stuff like that, but sooner or later, men will come out this out when when he grows up or stuff. He would say there was he would see things that are not equal out here court systems all that stuff like if it's, it's, it's not equal it never will be equal you know what i mean come on now you gotta be you gotta you, you gotta be come on now you gotta you gotta be smart with this like you come on now you know you see what the difference is like there's always going to be a difference there's a biological difference uh mind difference gender difference there's all a difference between me uh men and women you know what I mean? More women are more in touch with their, uh, with their feelings and nurturing. Men are more like, you know, disciplined stuff like that. You know, the disciplinary and stuff like that. So there's always gonna be, you're always gonna be like a runoff from that. I doubt my mom, mom, I said he my daughter. And when it's like, it, it's different, like, cause it's a son, like, come on now, you raise him right, you know, he know what to do, you, you protected him and then, and I I don't have no I don't have no son or daughter or anything like that. But, but I want to have some, but shit, not right now. Uh, but there's always gonna be a difference. Like I'm not like I'll least I'm be more protected over the daughter than I can over my son because he's stronger. You know, if I put up in fighting like in uh, in like uh, mixed martial arts or boxing or something like that, I know he can defend himself. I know he what he knows he knows what to do. I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible for him not to die or anything like that, but I know he's good. And I know me like I won't put up in mixed martial arts, but I'm more protected over her. I mean, because she's weaker stuff like that. You know what I mean? I don't know. Y'all tell me shot thing. I know some of y'all had kids. All right, yeah, let's get back into it. ...to communicate my feelings to my family. A lot of the times, I just don't know how my dad will react to some of my feelings. And I just don't want, I don't like for him to see me upset because I know it upsets him a lot. I do remember very vividly one time him telling me that whatever my energy is, he's gonna put the same energy back. I remember he told me that one time and it kind of just stuck with me and I always think about it. So I'm always thinking, how do, what do I say? How do I put myself like when I'm angry and stuff? I feel that I've been a very open father and understanding. And I try to let her know that I'm not going to judge her. I'm not here to judge her. I'm here to help her. I definitely feel that she doesn't feel comfortable expressing herself to me fully. And it's so strange, you know, because we grew up so close. We grew up so close. Like we were together all the time. I feel like when she became a teenager, it was like all that changed, everything. It was like an alternate universe. Like, what is this? What is going on? You just have to give her some space. Definitely. <sighs> I don't know. I guess... Uh... It scares me a lot to disappoint him. That makes sense, but just know that you're never gonna disappoint me. Like nothing you do will ever disappoint me. I love you infinitely for who you are and, and I accept you fully for who you are. 
I love you unconditionally. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. Like if with Kenji, to be honest, I don't. I, I try not to stop it, but I don't understand why. I mean, why are they putting this all out on like YouTube, on like national, like not national TV, but like on social media like this? I mean, I don't. I think that's like a family matter. I just be thinking like y'all and like your mother and stuff like that, like or her, him and her, like off camera. Like I don't, I don't. That's just weird to me. I don't think nobody should be up in your business like that. That you and your daughter, you know what I mean, and the mother, like this, and keep her in touch or something like that. But like all the extra stuff, like on social media, like I don't understand how dudes and and females be on social media, like talking about the talking about the relationship and stuff like that. Like, oh, he did this, she did this. Like, bro, that shit weird to me. That shit weird to me. All right, yo, I'm not bad. Let's go back to it. Okay. Sorry. It's okay, love. It's okay. Yeah. It's totally okay. You don't disappoint me. You never will. I didn't really have my mom to run to when I started my period. Like, all the girl things, literally. Like, yeah, I see my mom here and there. But my dad took custody of me at such a young age, so... That made us like have a really strong relationship. He's also like my best friend. I tell him everything. I tell him who I'm dating, this and that. And the cool thing is about him is like dads could be like, don't do this, don't do that. But if anything, he just gives me really good advice. That's really sweet. She hides about 20% of stuff from me. And yeah. I hide about 20% from her. She doesn't tell me everything because I don't want to know too much, you know. So I, I went through a lot of mental health stuff and physical health stuff in the last two years. When I was 18, I wasn't ready to say anything to anybody. I, I'm a very private person, and my dad is too, so he understands. And he never, he never pried, and he never asked too many questions. And I like to keep everything that was going on to myself because otherwise it felt like I was including more people into my problem. And the second time was kind of when it hit me, like, I can't do this alone, and I need my biggest support system to be there for me. And it's always going to be my parents, especially my dad. We went through this together. I mean, she had to go through this. We, I was there just to support her, and so, so was her mom. But it definitely made our relationship so much stronger. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. Nobody wants to be vulnerable in front of their family, but you know, if you're vulnerable, if you get sick, your kids are there to take care of you. you know, I broke, my health broke down. I'm on kidney dialysis. She takes me to dialysis three times a week. She feeds me. I just go, Rian, I'm hungry. You I know? feel like my dad takes care of me by paying my rent, paying my car insurance, getting me anything I need. So the least I could do for him when his health isn't good is take care of him. So my grandpa died five years ago. My dad went to go be in Israel, say goodbye to his dad, spend time with his family. But my dad was there for a month and we didn't see him for that month. And I realized a couple years later that he went so he wouldn't have to grieve in front of us. It just made me sad that he felt like he couldn't do that. And now I understand why. I know that I'm the backbone of the family and I like, and, and I'm the only man of the house, so I wouldn't want to see myself breaking down in front of any one of my family. I don't think there was a situation that I needed to, but I, I wouldn't think that I'd be comfortable opening up that much. I feel similar. I feel like I have to be strong just because I can't show her what I'm going through because then I'm kind of putting her through it, similar to what you said. You know, just recently she made a big decision she decided that she wanted to stay with her mom full time. Since she was two years old, we've always shared custody 50-50 down the middle. So I went from seeing her half of the time to here and there, and it hurt me, it hurt me a lot. It hurt me down to my core. But at the end of the day, that was her decision and she thought it was best for her mental health. So I agreed with it. But I can't sit here and say that night I didn't go home and cry, you know? But obviously that's not something I want her to see because I want her to be happy regardless of anything. Raising a 14-year-old young lady, being a man myself, there's a bit of a disconnect. And in this world of social media and instant gratifications and all these things that we have to deal with, it's the biggest challenge I've ever had. I have had moments I felt like I failed my family. My hospitalizations have put some financial strain on my family. 
and they've taken a huge emotional toll on my family, my parents and my sisters. And the first time it was like, yeah, this is horrible, but we have to get through it. And the second time, I just kept saying to myself, I can't believe I let this happen again. I can't believe I'm back here. And I can't believe I'm doing this to my family all over again. I'm really insecure about things that I do and just myself in general. So I constantly feel like I'm such a disappointment to especially my dad. Well, the question was, if you feel you failed or disappointed your family, I, I don't, I mean, why, why do you? I don't think do I disappointed you. I just feel if I had been a little bit more diligent, I wouldn't have found myself in the position that I was in in August. Yeah, but you also have to remember that you were fighting and it was a little stronger than, than you and eventually took over and we needed to fight back and we fought back and we won it, but you definitely did not disappoint us or failed us in any way. That's absolutely not the case, my angel. I tried to get her, you know, through my lawyer and the judge just blew me away. And I told, last thing I told the judge was, you know, the police told me a long time ago, if they keep coming out, somebody's gonna go to jail. And they, they had been out between her and her mother having fist fights and she was just a kid. I really just needed to get out of that situation. It was just bad for me health-wise to be with my mom. I mean, I love her. She's my mom. We're okay now because we're away. Because you're apart. Because we're apart. But living with her is a different story. When you live with someone, it's a different. My dad at the time, it was such a coincidence because I was like, I just need to get out of here. She hit me in my face at that moment. I had a bloody nose. And my dad, specifically that time, got off work like three hours early. And he opened the door and he saw me and... She went to jail, and ever since he's had custody of me. Wow. You know, I think I probably should have sat down in the failed your family, because in some ways I do feel that I did fail you. And in the way that I failed you was setting those expectations on you. You know, when she was born, I, I wanted her to be so perfect. I put her in gymnastics. I taught her multiple languages. She was in a very specific school that she went to, and I feel like me having those thoughts and those ideas of what a perfect daughter would be. Put too much pressure. Definitely. And at the end of the day, that's my fault. So I understand why she feels the way you do, but I, I am sorry. I apologize to you for ever putting those expectations on you. You're great just the way you are. And I'm just happy that we're here. We're having this moment. You know, I, I told my dad that we were doing this video. He had no idea what was going on, and I'm just grateful that he trusted me enough to just come, no questions asked. If it wasn't for you, I would not be the strong person I am, the outspoken person I am, or the opinionated person I am. I wouldn't have zero tolerance for bullshit. And it's all because of you that I'm able to live my life in the strongest way I possibly can. I'm going to repeat something you said because I found it beautiful and I completely agree with you, but there's nothing in this world that you could ever do that would disappoint me. What I feel towards you and your sisters is just endless love and nothing can ever change that. I just want to say that I'm thankful that I have a dad that loves me unconditionally and obviously saved me from an abusive relationship with my mother because if I didn't have a dad, and I was living with my mother, I don't know where I would be right now. So I'm happy and thankful I have him. She's a lovely kid and she's actually my caregiver, you know. Right now she's not working and she runs all my errands. She takes me everywhere I wanna go and does everything for me. So I'm very proud to have her as a daughter. <sighs> um, I guess, I feel like you kind of made me strong. So thank you a lot for that. And I love you a lot too. No lie, y'all, that, that is weird to me. Like, I couldn't, do, I don't know, like, no, nah, man, I can't do it, bro.
that shit is way too much from social media, man. Like that shit, cring that stuff is cringy to me. Like I don't understand. Like most of that stuff could stay in the house. Like I don't understand why we keep publicizing that on, on social media like that. Like. I mean, if they cool with it, they cool with it, but maybe, maybe, maybe my mindset is different. Like, I think you should handle that into, handle that in, in, uh, in the household. Like, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go through that, boy. Hell no. Hell no. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. I think, I think. I think they be like, like the disappointment thing. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I really don't know, y'all. I'm just trying to check out, like, why would they put all that on, like? So I, I went through a lot of mental health stuff, and I mean, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I've never been a parent. I don't know, like, I don't know if y'all would do this or y'all would go on social media and put all y'all business out there. Y'all tell me. Um, I don't know. It sounds like the daughters, the daughters didn't, the, the, I mean, the, the fathers didn't know. They just asked them to come and then we'll have a conversation about it. And they decided to have it, um, I guess. More people into my problem. I, mean, I, don't, I don't think, I don't think anything that they said would like be a disappointment to their fathers or their mothers or anything like that. It said that her 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 mother was trying to beat her up, man. That's some crazy stuff. Damn, trying to sock her in her mouth, boy, hit her in her face. I mean, at least she got custody and stuff. He raised her right, and you know she taking care of him and stuff like that. Like that's always good to have a daughter like that. But you know, if you're vulnerable, if you get sick, I wouldn't think that I'd be comfortable opening up that much. I feel similar. Yeah, like, I don't know, like, I don't know, men is different, like, all that emotional stuff, like, me, I'm not big, like, emotional type of guy, like, I don't, I don't see the point of it, I don't see a point of uh, complaining, I just don't see it, I think, I mean, what are you gonna do, if you do complain, nothing really gonna happen, I figured that a long time ago, like, all you can do is try to, try to fix what you, what you're about, what you're complaining about, and, that's what I try to do. I don't see the point of just complaining about it and just sit around and just let it happen. Um, that's just my mindset. Um, I don't know. Like, then dude out here putting, like, he got hurt and everything like that because she let, went up in the, she let, she just decided to live with her mother and stuff like that. Like, that is weird to me. But I understand where he's coming from. Like I don't. He said he's family because he's trying to like make her the perfect daughter to give her the best that he can give her. Like there's a. I don't know why would you apologize for that. Like you're just trying to be the best that you can. And I mean I understand why she had pressure. I understand why he put he put so much pressure on her because he wanted to do the best thing for his for his daughter. You know what I mean. You know, there ain't no there ain't no book for parenting. So, put up in the best school, the best you know, uh, give her as much language as she needs to speak. Put up and put up in sports. You know, what I mean, have a good, healthy daughter and stuff like that. Like, I don't see anything wrong with what he he did. Um, it just she just fell under pressure. Like, I mean, what can you complain about? Like, she just wasn't you know strong enough to handle it i guess i don't know social media and instant gratification my dad i do feel that i did fail you and in the way that i failed you was setting those expectations on you you know when she was born i i wanted her to be so perfect i put her in gymnastics i taught her multiple languages if she was in a very specific school Oh uh, yeah, I seen the video. I don't know my my computer tripping right now. I don't know why. 
Oh yeah, that's the end of the video, y'all. Please hit that like button and subscribe button, y'all. And share this video with everybody to see your family, friends, whoever you see, and tell us Scott to the Fat Man's podcast, y'all. I will see you guys in the next one, y'all. If y'all have any comments or any uh, opinions, go ahead and drop it in the comments. Y'all tell me what y'all think up in the video, y'all. But Osiris off in the Fat Man's podcast, y'all. See you guys on the next one. Peace out.